The Triple H versus Mick Foley rivalry was a feud that spanned multiple years and a feud that was extremely beneficial to both men involved. While it's true that the Mankind character had been featured in a WWF main event on pay-per-view before this rivalry, it's also true that Mick Foley was still trying to solidify his place in the World Wrestling Federation as Triple H was trying to do the exact same thing. The Foley vs Helmsley feud began in 1997 where the landscape of the World Wrestling Federation would go through drastic changes. And through this rivalry, both Mick Foley and Hunter Hearst Helmsley would go through changes of their own that drastically improved their position in the company. Helmsley owes a lot to mankind and really, Triple H helped fans see another side of Mick Foley. The mankind character at one point had no redeeming qualities whatsoever, but fans would develop sympathy for Mrs Foley's baby boy and it all happened during this feud with Triple H. Sure, people will point to Foley's sit down interview with Jim Ross as the true catalyst for fans getting behind Mick Foley, but that's just one part of the puzzle. Foley still needed a dance partner in the ring to effectively turn babyface, and well, Triple H was the perfect partner. So today, we're going to look at some of the key moments from the Triple H vs Mick Foley rivalry, a rivalry that elevated both superstars and a rivalry that featured some extremely good matches. Weeks before the 1997 King of the Ring, the WWF aired some interviews with Mick Foley where a more human side to the wrestler was shown. The Mankind character had been portrayed as a deranged and lost individual with no remorse for his opponents, but during these interviews, a softer side to Mankind was shown. While still remaining in character, Foley talked about his struggles as a kid and his struggles growing up, and how he wanted to gain acceptance through becoming a wrestler. Foley said he dreamed of being a guy like Shawn Michaels, a successful superstar who had the affection of female fans across the world. And to demonstrate this, a home video was shown where Mick Foley portrayed the Dude Love character in 1983. During the video, Dude Love jumps off the roof of his friend's house, proving that Mick would go through ridiculous lengths to gain some sort of acceptance. Mick said that things didn't work out for Dude Love, nature didn't cooperate with Mrs Foley's baby boy, and so Dude Love was replaced by Cactus Jack, a brutal character who didn't care about how he looked or how he came across the fans. Cactus Jack was a brutal hardcore wrestler who would put his body through immense pain in order to win matches. Through the mutilation of his own body, Mick Foley found dignity. Fans respected Cactus Jack and what he would do inside the ring. Foley didn't need to be Shawn Michaels, he found his niche through hardcore wrestling. But when Mankind showed up in the World Wrestling Federation, Foley said he lost the respect of fans, and Foley got upset because Vince McMahon didn't hire him when he was young, something that could have saved him from destroying his own body and his own mind. In a nutshell, this all added a serious amount of humanity to Mankind, even though it ended with Jim Ross taking the mandible claw. And through these interviews, fans who didn't know the history of Mick Foley found a new respect for the wrestler, they now understood some of his very real struggles, and instead of seeing Mankind as just another dark wrestling character, fans started seeing Mick Foley as a human being, a troubled man who just wanted some sort of acceptance. On the flip side of this, the character of Hunter Hearst Helmsley did not care about fans accepting him. Hunter had portrayed the Greenwich Blue Blood character since debuting in the World Wrestling Federation, and just like the early versions of Mankind, the Helmsley gimmick had absolutely no redeeming qualities. Paul Levesque was friends with Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall and Sean Waltman, and these group of individuals had a lot of backstage stroke within the World Wrestling Federation. When the infamous curtain call incident took place, Helmsley was the only man who got punished. Hunter was supposed to win the 1996 King of the Ring, but that big victory was taken away from him and Triple H would instead have to work lower on the cards in order to redeem himself. 
Triple H said that 1996 felt like an entire lifetime, but he got through it and he was back on the right path as we went into 1997. The Blue Blood character though had maybe gone as far as it could and Triple H would need to evolve in order to stay relevant. And he achieved this by doing two things. First, he added China as his hater or his bodyguard, and China was so unique that people had no choice but to pay attention when she and Hunter walked into arenas across the states. And secondly, Triple H would become much more vicious inside the ropes. Hunter would slowly become a much more violent superstar, and the man who helped Triple H each step of the way was Mick Foley, and I really mean each step of the way. You'll notice that these Foley vs Triple H matches become increasingly more violent as the months and the years go on, and really, Triple H has a lot to thank Foley for when it comes to Hunter becoming the game. At the same time though, Hunter was the perfect opponent for a guy who wanted to garner sympathy. You had Triple H becoming more systematically aggressive, while we also had Mick Foley becoming more human, so really, Triple H vs Mick Foley in 1997 made a lot of sense. Add in the obvious fact that Mankind would take an absolute beating in order to make his opponents look good, and well, you have a match made in heaven really. Triple H met Mick Foley in the King of the Ring finals in 1997 and many fans felt that Foley was winning this one. Those sit down interviews with Jim Ross had been airing on TV so many people thought the WWF were giving the Mankind character a push. But what we ended up getting instead was one of the first showings of this more aggressive Triple H. Hunter in China destroyed Mick Foley in the 1997 King of the Ring finals, and from a storyline perspective, it was absolutely the right thing to do, in my opinion anyway. If the WWF wanted to continue gaining sympathy for mankind, and if the WWF wanted Triple H to slowly move away from the over-exaggerated blue blood stuff, then having Hunter decimate Foley while the odds were stacked against Mick just made sense. It's easy to say Foley was more popular and therefore he should have won the King of the Ring, but it's a marathon here, not a sprint. And remember that Foley would still reach the very top of the WWF ladder well before Triple H. All in all though, the 1997 King of the Ring final is a good match that done what it was supposed to do from a character standpoint, and just to drive home the fact that Hunter couldn't care less about Mick Foley, Triple H attacked his opponent after the match. This finish meant that the Triple H vs Mankind feud would continue, and we'd see the match at the next two pay-per-views, Canadian Stampede and SummerSlam 1997. The night after the King of the Ring though, Triple H delivered a promo that really was a precursor to his famous My Time interview, and this has seemingly been totally forgotten these days. Hunter tells Vince McMahon that it was Vince's politics that resulted in Hunter missing out on last year's King of the Ring finals, and instead of saying it's my time, Triple H says it's my turn. Hunter was pulling the curtain back a little here, so to speak, and this added a little more realism to what was going on in the career of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Foley appears on the big screen and Foley wants a rematch. Hunter says he enjoyed everything he'd done to Foley in the King of the Ring finals, but Mick doesn't deserve a rematch. After being taunted by China, Mankind made his way to the ring and Triple H again destroyed Mick. Hunter left his crown in the ring and Mankind put it on his head. The rematch was booked then for the Canadian Stampede show in July of 1997, but the finish of this one would be very inconclusive. The Canadian Stampede match opened up the pay-per-view, but these two would beat each other up throughout the entire show. A very physical match here would lead to both men getting counted out, but they were far from done. Mankind and Helmsley fought through the crowd at the end of the match, but a little later on, the two men started brawling again just before the featured light heavyweight match. Again, a little later in the show, the two men could be seen fighting in the parking lot, and this is interesting because Triple H had never really been involved in such confrontations before. Foley had experience in boiler room brawls and similar matches in the World Wrestling Federation, but this was one of the first times that Triple H really got his hands dirty outside 
inside the ring, and it was good to see the Blue Blood stuff was starting to grow a little tiresome. The week after Canadian Stampede, Mick Foley's Dude Love character made his debut when Foley won the tag team titles with Stone Cold Steve Austin. The whole three faces of Foley stuff will get covered in a future video, but it's important that we look at Foley's alter egos because one of these is extremely important when considering the Mick Foley vs Triple H rivalry. So Dude Love was now a WWF superstar, but Mick would revert back to Mankind in order to face Triple H in a steel cage match at SummerSlam 1997. These two needed to be contained inside the classic big blue cage, and China also needed to be kept away from Mick Foley, but the cage didn't stop the ninth wonder of the world from getting involved. This was a very exciting match and the audience loved every moment of it, but what everyone remembers from this SummerSlam encounter was Mick Foley jumping from the top of the cage. Foley had the match won, but Mick stopped climbing down and he threw away his Mankind mask. Foley then climbed back up the cage and he ripped his shirt to reveal his old Cactus Jack singlet. And then, in a moment that harkened back to Mick Foley seeing Jimmy Snuka in Madison Square Garden, Mick delivered a diving elbow drop to Helmsley. The crowd went absolutely crazy as Mankind morphed into Cactus Jack for just a brief moment, and Foley was able to win the match afterwards while wearing a huge smile across his face. Mick had finally defeated Triple H on pay per view, but really, things were just getting started. Shortly after the Steel Cage match, Triple H's friendship with Shawn Michaels was brought to the ring when the genesis of D-Generation X began unfolding before our very eyes. It all started when Hunter teamed up with Shawn to face Mankind and his unlikely tag partner, The Undertaker. This match happened on the August 18th episode of Raw, and it's important to bring this up because Hunter's on-screen relationship with Shawn Michaels would shape the remainder of his career. Sean's heel turn was completed on this evening when he attacked The Undertaker with a steel chair, and this resulted in Foley and Taker scoring a DQ win. But really, that doesn't matter. The character of Triple H would now go through even more changes as he became a member of D-Generation X, one of the WWF's most influential and noteworthy factions of all time. The following month, on the September 22nd episode of Raw, Triple H was booked into a Falls Count Anywhere match with Foley, and it's on this very episode of Raw that Cactus Jack made his return to wrestling. Dude Love and Mankind appeared on the Titantron, with both characters saying that a Falls Count Anywhere match really wasn't their thing. But Mankind knows a guy who would love to face Triple H in such a match type, and that was Cactus Jack. Jack and Hunter go on to have a really fun yet physical encounter that was filled with big bumps, and the match ended when Jack hits Hunter with a pile driver through a table. Cactus Jack, Dude Love, and Mankind were all active WWF characters, and Triple H was getting prepared for the biggest push of his career. So now we skip forward to 1999, just after WrestleMania 15. Triple H has had his run with DX and he's now part of the corporation, and Mick Foley had won and lost the WWF Championship during his rivalry with The Rock. What we're going to do here is briefly mention the lesser known Triple H vs Mankind matches that took place on TV, and really, I'm doing this to give you an outline of the whole rivalry. The journey to Hell in a Cell means a whole lot more when you see how both men got there. Mankind is scheduled to take on the big show at Backlash in a boiler room brawl, and just to soften Mick Foley up a little before Backlash, Triple H gets booked into a match with Mankind on the 19th of April episode of Raw is War. Keep in mind that the big show's association with the corporation had ended by this point. The Mankind character was now drastically different than before. He was still a little deranged, but really, Mankind was now used to show off Mick Foley's comedic skills more than anything else. Just like their previous matches, China would be a huge factor here, and the match ends with China hitting a low blow, which results in a DQ win for Foley. The corporation then attacked Foley after the bout, but the big show came to Mankind's aid. Foley appreciated the help, but Mankind was still going to bring the fight during the boiler room brawl. Mankind would end up winning his match here at Backlash, by the way. 
The following month, Mankind again faced Triple H on Raw, only this time, Mankind was now in the Union stable while Hunter was still involved with the corporation. This one stemmed from problems at the Over the Edge pay-per-view where Triple H attacked The Rock and Mankind with a lead pipe. Mankind said he does not enjoy a pipe job, <laughs> so he wants an ODQ match against Triple H on Raw. Plus, Mankind said that China was checking him out earlier in the shower, and that's good enough reason to face Triple H in another brutal match. Again, it's all about the numbers game. China made sure Triple H won by injecting herself into the match. Triple H ends up hitting Mankind with his sledgehammer to win the bout, and afterwards, The Rock has to save Mankind from taking more punishment. We then reached the absolute fucking mess that was the SummerSlam 1999 main event and going through all this requires a lot of notes. I've talked about this previously but let's quickly go through it again. Steve Austin is our WWF champion and China is our number one contender. China and Triple H have a match for the number one contendership and Mick Foley gets involved ensuring that Triple H gets defeated. Mankind then asks China for a number one contendership match, but China refuses, deciding to hit Mankind with a low blow instead. Commissioner Shawn Michaels then overrules China, and another number one contendership match gets booked for some reason, and Mankind ends up beating China with the mandible claw. So, Shawn Michaels comes out and he announces that Foley is our number one contender. Only then, Shane McMahon comes out and he says there's a big conspiracy here that's stopping Triple H from main eventing SummerSlam. And keep in mind that all this is happening on the same episode of Raw. This leads to another number one contendership match, Triple H vs Mankind, so poor China has been pretty much robbed of her main event spot at SummerSlam. We have Steve Austin on commentary and Shane McMahon is our first referee and HBK is the second. China again gets involved in the bout but it wasn't enough to secure a decisive victory for the game. In the end, the match gets ruled as a draw when both men's shoulders get counted to the mat. It's then announced that because both men won the bout, Steve Austin will face Mankind and Triple H in the SummerSlam main event. It's been confirmed that Steve Austin didn't want to drop the title to Triple H and this is why Mankind was added to the match. Mankind would end up winning the title at SummerSlam but the very next night on Raw, Mankind dropped the title to Hunter. Triple H got his title shot by holding Jim Ross hostage inside the ring. Mick Foley agrees to put the title on the line but Hunter still does some damage to good old JR. Thanks to Shane McMahon in China, Triple H is able to defeat Mankind during the Raw main event. The game had now arrived and the game was the new WWF Champion. We have just one more TV match to look at before we reach our big main events and this one took place on the September 23rd episode of Smackdown. Triple H lost his WWF title to Vince McMahon of all people the week prior thanks to some help from Stone Cold Steve Austin and if Triple H wants to get involved in the upcoming six pack challenge at Unforgiven for the WWF title then he's gonna have to run the gauntlet on Smackdown. Triple H must face the Big Show in a chokeslam match, he has to go to hell with Kane in an inferno match, a casket match with The Undertaker would follow, Triple H would then step into Mankind's boiler room for a match against Mrs Foley's baby boy, and then Triple H would main event Smackdown in a Brahma bull rope match with The Rock. If Triple H can win three of the five matches, he's in the six pack challenge. Triple H won the Inferno match, the Boiler Room Brawl and the Brahma Bull Rope match. The Undertaker was replaced by Midian and Viscera during the casket match as The Undertaker needed time away from TV to heal some injuries. The Boiler Room Brawl with Mankind though was admittedly one of the weaker Boiler Room Brawls that the World Wrestling Federation ever produced. It was quite short at only 4.5 minutes long and the match came to an end when someone used a metal pipe to push Mankind off a cabin when Foley was going for the elbow drop. We didn't see who used the metal pipe but it would turn out to be the British Bulldog. Bulldog had just returned to the World Wrestling Federation and he also helped Triple H win the final match of the gauntlet also. At the Unforgiven show then, Triple H would end up winning the WWF Championship once again. 
And this brings us to the 2000 Royal Rumble Street Fight, one of the absolute best matches of this rivalry and for many it doesn't get much better than this. The McMahon Helmsley era is in full effect. Triple H and Stephanie are ruling the World Wrestling Federation with an iron fist, yet there's a group of unhappy superstars who stand up to this new regime. In late December of 1999, The Rock and Mankind were forced to face each other in a pink slip on a pole match. The loser of the match would get fired, and The Rock ended up winning this match. In the end though, the WWF roster along with The Rock came out of the ring and they demanded that Mick Foley got reinstated. If Foley didn't get his job back then, the rest of the locker room would walk out of the company. Triple H agreed to rehire Foley and he also agreed to give Mankind a title shot at the Royal Rumble. The title match would quickly get turned into a street fight, but Mankind informed Hunter that he wasn't ready to face him in a street fight just yet before ripping off his shirt and mask. Mankind was maybe not ready, but Cactus Jack certainly was. The match would get billed as Triple H vs Cactus Jack. The two men would face each other one on one with the WWF title on the line, on pay per view for the very first time. And both competitors had come a real long way since their first meetings in 1997. It's a highly recommended street fight here in Madison Square Garden. And again, many consider this as the pinnacle of the Triple H vs Mick Foley rivalry. The two men would fight in the audience, they would fight on the entranceway, and Hunter got a real advantage when he managed to handcuff Jack towards the end of the match. The Rock and a police officer end up helping Mick Foley, and afterwards we see the thumbtacks. Foley takes a back body drop and a pedigree on the tacks, but Foley still kicks out, and Triple H ends up putting Cactus Jack away with a second brutal pedigree. Triple H got carried away on a stretcher after the bout, but Foley woke up and Hunter ended up getting hit with Mick's 2x4 wrapped in barbed wire. Madison Square Garden goes crazy for Foley as the pay-per-view continues. There was still another story to tell here and it would get all wrapped up at No Way Out 2000. There's really only one way a rivalry like this could end. Inside Hell in a Cell. Triple H granted Mick Foley a rematch at No Way Out, but there would be two stipulations. It would be inside Hell in a Cell, and if Foley lost, he would have to retire. There was no coming back as Dude Love or anything like that. Mick Foley would have to leave wrestling if he lost to the game at No Way Out. Steel chairs, a flaming 2x4 wrapped in barbed wire, steel steps, the cell itself. Absolutely nothing was off limits as Triple H and Mick Foley beat the hell out of each other. It's an absolute bloodbath at No Way Out and it's also extremely entertaining. Keep in mind too that Foley absolutely believed that this was his last match. This was the final time that fans would see Mick Foley do his thing and he sure did give fans something to remember inside Hell in a Cell. The two men would end up fighting on top of the structure and the ring was gimmicked to take the impact of a falling Cactus Jack, not like the 1998 King of the Ring where Foley legitimately knocked himself out, taking the exact same move. And the game would end up hitting the pedigree to end the career of Mick Foley. Mick Foley wanted Cactus Jack to go out fighting though and that mission was accomplished. Some of the bumps during this match are simply painful to watch but this makes the whole main event extremely gripping and extremely exciting. It's a fantastic way to end this rivalry and the end is quite emotional as Mick Foley looks out to the crowd before disappearing from the WWF. Only no, he wouldn't disappear just yet. Chris Jericho was supposed to main event WrestleMania 2000 in a fatal four-way battle of the McMahons, but Y2J hadn't impressed the WWF higher-ups. So Vince McMahon picked up the phone and Mick Foley was brought back for one more match. And if you ask me, which you didn't, but if you ask me, it was the wrong thing to do. Mick Foley ending his career inside Hell in a Cell with Triple H would have been a much better way to say goodbye. But anyway, Triple H versus The Rock versus The Big Show versus Mick Foley headlined WrestleMania. And so Mick had one more chance to get some revenge on the game. But in the end, Triple H retained the WWF title.
From the disturbed and deranged Mankind character and from the Greenwich Blue Blood, all the way to Cactus Jack vs the game inside Hell in a Cell, Mick Foley and Triple H's rivalry carried both men to bigger and better things within the World Wrestling Federation and as mentioned at the top of this video, the feud was nothing but beneficial for both men. Mankind and Hunter Hearst Helmsley had absolutely nothing in common but as time went on it became apparent that they actually did share something, the desire to beat the hell out of each other. Foley used Triple H to climb up the ladder the exact same way Triple H used Foley, and while other rivalries took place for both men during this 3 year time period, the two would always find their way back to each other and it all ended in the most brutal and violent way possible. Would Mick Foley have become a main eventer without Triple H and vice versa? Yeah, probably, but I wouldn't have it any other way for both men really. This was one of the WWF's best feuds at the time and it's a rivalry that I had a whole lot of fun revisiting for this video. Thank you very very much for watching and take care. Play off the